Question one, is the movie racist? Is the, the question everybody is talking about. The hottest question of the season. It's also one of the more complicated questions. On the surface, it does look like the film is kind of... Okay, on the surface, it does look like the film is pretty racist, right? Uh, white people um, taking revenge on Indians. Uh, and so when we see Indian people in the movie, they are only presented in a negative way. Uh, we only see Indian people killing people and selling their wives. We don't really see any other parts of Indian culture. That is true. Also, the main character, Ethan, is also quite racist. A lot of you mentioned that Ethan seems to hate Indian people in an unreasonable way. Uh, we can talk more about that in question three. At the same time, we can also look at other parts of the film where white people interact with Indian people. For example, Martin. Uh, when they discover the first Indian body, Martin wants to leave him alone, but Ethan shoots out the body's eyes so that the Indian cannot go to the afterlife. So, it's, And then when they're fighting across the river and the Indians are running away, uh, Ethan wants to keep shooting them, but Martin stops Ethan from shooting. Uh, and then, of course, Debbie, when they realize Debbie has been kidnapped and brainwashed by the Indians, which is also a very racist idea. Uh, Ethan says there's no hope for her. It's too late, kind of treats her like a zombie. Um, but Martin still tries to save Debbie. Uh, and then one last point is uh, when Martin accidentally buys an Indian wife, uh, he doesn't treat her very well. Uh, but later when they discover her dead, uh, they do feel sad about th that fact. So it does seem like uh, most characters in the movie don't think of Indians in a good way, but Martin at least has some compassion for Indians, feels like uh, they should be treated better by white people. And we also have uh, a very strange scene in the winter. This is the scene that Martin says in his letter, he can't get straight in his head. I think is wrong. Uh, the translation should be uh, So in the winter, they come across American soldiers who have just attacked Indians, and now they are taking Indian women and children and putting them in, I guess it's a jail, uh, in like a log house. That scene has nothing to do with the story. It seems to be to show us that white people did have some racist policies against Indian people. So yes, we, the main character is very racist, uh, but the film also tries to show other perspectives on relationships between white people and Indian people. Um, so at the end of the day, I think we can say that the film is kind of racist. Like, it doesn't show us good sides of Indian culture, but it does show us some bad sides of white people's attitudes toward American Indians. And it reminds us that the story is set in 18, beginning in 1868, but the movie came out in 1956. Uh, so maybe when the movie came out, attitudes towards Indian people had improved a little bit so that um, they could see how worse the racism was in the past. Um, but today, when we look back at this movie, we can see how they also were kind of racist. You know, our attitudes uh, change with time, but uh, that does, should not prevent us from like watching a movie like this or learning about the past.
as long as we can tell which parts are no longer acceptable today. Number two, the film's view of government. So who is the government in this film? Uh, the Reverend and Captain, right? He has the authority. Does the film, what kind of person does the film portray him as? Do you think that's kind of weird? He's a, he's a reverend and he's an army captain. Does that seem strange? Uh, as a reverend, what does he do? He marries people and he buries people. Most of the time, he's an army officer commanding people to hunt Indians or to protect uh, white families. So it seems like the film is showing us how uh, government is supporting like the dominant culture, in this case, white people's culture, um, and that it's in charge of ritual and culture and belief, as well as uh, has the authority to gather people to take collective action, GT Xingdong. But a lot of the time, uh, the captain gets into arguments with Ethan, right? Ethan sometimes does not agree with his decisions. And in the movie, most of this, these situations, uh, Ethan's ideas are the better ideas. So it does seem like the film does not have a very positive view of government. What other representatives of the government do we see? Soldiers, right? Especially near the end of the movie, we have that very young lieutenant, like Song Wei, uh, who doesn't know to take off his hat, doesn't know how to use his sword, just like a very green soldier, uh, and but he's in charge of leading the soldiers to help um, Ethan and the Rangers. So it also seems the film also seems to be telling us that at that time the government is not worth supporting. It's not totally in control. It doesn't really understand what is going on in this part of the country. That's actually a very big part of Western movies, Western films, Shibu Ding. Uh, the idea is that the people move faster than the government. And so before the government understands what is happening, the people have to take care of themselves. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. Um, but always uh, in a Western film, by the end, the government finally arrives and finally helps out, just like in this movie. Right. When they finally do attack the Indians, the government uh, helps this attack. Number three, how would you describe Ethan Edwards? He's racist, but he's also an expert at the local culture. He speaks the Indian Comanche language. He speaks Spanish uh, when in New Mexico. Um, and he understands the culture of the local Indians. He can even tell you this Indian is from this tribe and not that tribe. Um, so he's a racist, but he's also an expert. Does that make sense? Does this person make sense to you? Is it possible to understand so much about Indian people and still be racist? It is. Because knowledge is one thing, but values are a different thing. Uh, in fact, the West has a long history of using local knowledge and cultural knowledge to control uh, people around the world. Think of the British, uh, the British Empire. The British Empire studied places like uh, India in, in Asia, that India, uh, and, and Turkey in order to understand them, in order to control them. So knowledge does not necessarily make you a better person. I think this is important for college students to know. Knowledge does not necessarily make you a better person. It depends on what you do with that knowledge. Um, number four, the film's view of violence and revenge. 
yes, most of the time we follow a group of people who are trying to take revenge. But when they set out, if you remember, Lori's mother said, maybe the girls are already dead. Don't waste the boy's life on revenge. And of course, Ethan and Marty ignore her and they keep going. And indeed, uh, Brad dies, right? Uh, Lori's older brother dies. Um, and the the mission of revenge kills a great many Indians, including innocent Indians. Um, and at the end, they save Debbie instead of as Ethan wanted to kill Debbie. They save her and bring her back. But does the film give us a positive view of this way of doing things? We can also think about the fight between uh, Martin and Charlie, right? When they start fighting, first the Reverend comes out and breaks up the fight, and then he tells them, fight fair. So the film seems to be saying that if a fight is fair and it follows rules, then it's a good fight. But is that how the white people fight against Indians? Is it a fair fight? Maybe in the beginning, it's more fair. There are more Indians and there are less white people. But by the end, when the army comes, that's not a fair fight. So from this point of view, the film seems to be saying that the way that uh, white Americans behaved towards Indians back then was unfair. And that violence and revenge are only OK if you have limits, if you have rules and boundaries. Last one. Uh, sometimes characters are prevented from looking at things. So when. Ethan and Marty get back to their home, it's burned down. And uh, Ethan discovers their mother, uh, their mother's body in the building, and he prevents Marty from seeing the body. Or uh, when they split up in the middle of the mountains, and only later does Ethan tell them that he discovered Lucy's body, and he didn't want to tell them. Uh, and when Marty asks, or not Marty, when Brad asks uh, whether Lucy's body is whole or something was done to her. Uh, Ethan says, what's the use of describing it? It's better that you don't know. And then finally, when the two men are fighting for Lori, uh, the men ask the women to go inside and not look at the fight. Uh, it seems to be from an older idea that um, you don't have to see it for yourself in order to understand what happened. So in effect, this is a kind of trust in authority. It's like, we'll take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. We don't want you to suffer from having to deal with uh, these events or personally seeing these events. Um, but this is quite different from uh, culture today a lot of the time. Like if you watch a, a crime movie, they'll show you the body. If you like uh, watch the news on TV, they will only blur out the moment when somebody dies, but everything else it will show you. Um, and maybe it is because today we have less trust in authority. When the government says, don't worry, we'll take care of it. We still want to know, right? We want to make sure that the government is taking care of it. Um, so the way that we think about this question shows how uh, Western culture or westernized culture has changed between uh, the 1950s and today. Even here in Taiwan, well, I guess especially here in Taiwan, because for a long time, nobody trusted the government during martial law. Uh, but today we now can ask questions and we can follow up on and uh, make sure that the government is doing its job. So that's something that has changed in the culture. OK, do you have questions? Oh, OK, I have two reminders before I let you go. 
first reminder, uh, now that you know your uh, midterm exam score, you can do some calculations, think about what your final grade might be. Uh, and uh, if you need to, you can do the bonus assignment on Moodle, or if you have to, you can even drop the course, Jin Shou. It's your choice. The bonus assignment is at the bottom here. Second announcement uh, for the final project. Please give me the YouTube link. Uh, no later than the Wednesday before class, and I will put the YouTube link on Moodle so that we can uh, begin more efficiently uh, during class. When we begin, I will invite each uh, for every group. I will invite uh, someone or maybe all of you on stage. You can choose. Uh, if you want to, you can introduce your short film. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, if anyone has questions, you will also answer their questions. So if you want to, you can send one person like the producer or the director, or you can all come on stage to introduce your short film. Introducing your short film is a good idea for you because then you have the chance to explain what you wanted to do. You help prepare your audience for your short film. Maybe that will help your uh, audience better understand what you're trying to do. So uh, week 18 Wednesday, please give me the link on YouTube uh, to your short film by that time. OK, see you next week.